Hope everyone is doing great. Today I'm going to show you a real life example for the Internet of Things or an IoT system. The project consists of two parts, the hardware side and the software. For the, for the hardware, we are using a Siemens Logo Logic module, which is a compact yet powerful controller with several embedded features such as cloud connectivity, which makes the implementation of project very efficient and fast. For the software side, we are going to use Amazon Web Services or AWS, and we are going to use different services within AWS to implement this project. Because this is just a demo video, I'm not showing the details of how to implement every step, but if you are interested, there is a workshop on the AWS web website that you can refer to for technical details. Please keep in mind, based on my experience of following those steps, some of the items has been moved around in AWS because AWS is continuously changing and improving. And uh, so you might be in a situation that you cannot follow the steps and you need to do some research on Google and many other websites. So without further ado, let's jump into the details of this project and what we are going to show you today. So as I mentioned, uh, we are going to use that logo, the Siemens logo logic module for the hardware to read some sensor data, some analog data and digital uh, contact switches, and then transfer them to the cloud and AWS IoT core service. Because I had a an old logo which doesn't support cloud connectivity feature, I had to use another logo just as a brief to send this sensor information the cloud. As you see in this picture, I have two logos. The logo on the left side, which is a very small demo unit, has some analog knobs or potentiometer just to simulate some analog sensor data and sends it to the, the first logo, has some tip switches on the top, uh, which simulates uh, input one to six of this specific logo model. And then this logo is connected to the second logo through Ethernet IP and TCP IP protocol. And it does not show on this picture, but these two are connected through an Ethernet suite. They can be on each corner of a plant, or they can be in different cities or countries, doesn't really matter. And the second logo on the right side is connected to the internet and ultimately to AWS through internet using this uh, yellow Ethernet connection, which is connected to their local router. Okay, as I mentioned, there is a workshop on AWS website and has six different labs that you may want to follow after watching this demo. So I got this architecture drawing from that workshop. Uh, it's still pretty updated. I mean, the name of the services has not been changed so far. But as I mentioned, the implementation process has been changed, so you need to do some research. Just a brief overview of what we are looking at here. As you see here, we have six labs. On the first one, we have a logo, which connects to the AWS IoT core service. And this, this step is done automatically by LogoSoft Comfort. That's a great feature that has been provided by Siemens engineers you don't really need to do a lot of things or any programming to connect the logo to the AWS uh, cloud. And everything is being done by a few simple clicks. I'm not going to explain how to do that because there is a very good video on YouTube and on the Siemens website. I can put the link down below if you want. And you can refer how to connect your logo to the cloud. And then after we have the information on the AWS IoT core, we are going to use an AWS Lambda function to do some conversion and also in another lab to kind of format the data for storing it into the database. And um, at the same time, yeah, we are going to use different features and different services within AWS. For example, on the first lab, we're going to use AWS IoT event service to to create some events, to trigger some events and send, send some email notification through Amazon SNS service, 
when the analog value is above a threshold or below a threshold. And the most important part is uh, the visualization of the data. So after we have this uh, data, CMS logo data in the AWS IoT core, my apologies, and we convert the data to a decimal format from hexadecimal, we are going to store it to a database called Amazon TimeStream, which is a great and powerful database for IoT application. And ultimately, we are going to use the analytics tool called Grafana for data visualization. And of course, you can do more advanced um, data analytics on the data. But for now, we are just going to have one trend, simple trend. And in other lab, of course, you can connect the Amazon Alexa or any other voice command device to, to, the, to your AWS IoT core. And then uh, from there, you can command the logo or send the data or commands to the Siemens logo to control some devices. Because I didn't have the Amazon Alexa here, I did not implement this step. But it's very convenient after you do all of this step, you can do the last step as well. Okay, so let's go to the AWS console because of the security reason, of course, I have to hide my addresses and ARN and so on. And because I'm just recording this video without any editing software, I have to make them uh, hidden. So I'm just going to drag it from my other screen and you can see what is going on in there. Okay. So, as I mentioned, the connection between the logo and the AWS cloud is done but through Logo Top Comfort. If you click, so I did not create any device or a thing in AWS manually. Everything was done automatically. After I followed up the steps to connect the logo to AWS, I will have access to this device shadow state document, which uh, as you may guess over here, or as you may see, I have one, two, three, four, five signals. The first two are to AM uh, one and two in the logo. If you are familiar with the logo, those are the internal addresses or analog flags, uh, which basically is connected to two analog inputs of the logo. And also uh, another to M1, M2 and M4 bits and one Q or output bit, uh, bit is Q1. So I'm just going to trigger a um, couple of these values. I'm going to change the analog values, and you can watch uh, these values that will be changed. And at the same time, I'm going to trigger the Amazon um, SNS, and you will see that I will I will get an email basically if the value of this analog value AM2 is going above a certain value. Okay, as you see here, the value of M2 is switching between 0 and 1 while I switch in the physical switch on the logo. Okay. Now I've, I've changed the value of AM2, and because the update uh, rate is it's cyclic every 10, 10 seconds, I believe. This uh, the, the new value will come to the AWS cloud and ultimately through the steps and you know the Amazon the Lambda function it will trigger the SNS and I will get a notification email that uh, the analog value or sensor value has reached a threshold. So in the meantime, I can show you the data visualization. As I mentioned here, we are using this software called um, Grafana within the AWS, which is Advanced Analytics, uh, to visualize data. So it's basically a very simple uh, tool which can do a lot of powerful things, basically.
But of course, if you're an automation engineer, you might find this a bit complicated. So you need to spend more time on the AWS and software part to implement this thing. Okay, uh, it seems I actually got the email uh, from SNS because I changed the value. As you see here, I have a custom message. It says, current outside temperature 100, which exceeds the limit of 35. That's the limit that I have set up within the AWS. And uh, as you see, uh, this uh, notification system works. And my value, uh, because before starting the, the session, I had this value to zero, then we went up, and then we went down again. So you see, I have the real-time graph as well at the same time. So maybe I can show you the time, time stream database. And this is a very simple query. So basically I have one database called LogoDB and I have a logo demo table within that uh, DB. It kind of stores all the incoming values from logo. And with this um, simple um, SQL uh, query, I can see what is inside my database or time, time stream uh, database. So, okay, sorry, I think I selected part of it. So after I just select all, as you see here, I have different columns. The first one version, of course, that's like automatically created, measure name, the time, measure value, and um, basically it's Boolean or not. It's just different column based on the database design. So the graph now is basically reading this data from the time stream database. Okay, and on the Lambda function side, as I mentioned, we have two functions. One is the logo hex conversion, basically, because as you may notice here, the, the values from in the logo are hexadecimal. They aren't really easy to, to manipulate in the digital world. So you see these, these are hexadecimal values. So we have to convert them to decimal value for doing some basic mathematical operations such as comparison. So basically this function, the first one, okay, you might see my area ARN over there, but that's fine. I'm going to delete that after. So basically, as you see here, we have this simple function here to convert the hexadecimal values to the corresponding decimal values. The second function that we have here is the IoT values or sorry the logo values to the time stream database. This is basically creating the creating the columns and how to format them, defining the, the data type, Boolean, double for analog values, and, and so on. And uh, yes, that's, that's pretty much it. Uh, I wanted to basically show you how easy it is to connect the logo to AWS, but I have to be honest, if you are not a software engineer or a cloud specialist, you might have to spend some time to figure out how to implement or how to connect different AWS services to achieve this uh, performance, basically. For example, to set up the SNS, to send an email notification, and uh, how to configure the uh, um, time, time stream database, uh, and so on. But on the Siemens side, because Siemens is designing for automation engineer, they know that we are really not a software engineer and we don't know much about scripting and coding of course many automation engineers nowadays know all those things but that's not basically uh, ultimately the goal for an automation engineer so we have to make things simple for automation engineers to basically get involved as less as possible to the programming side and we have to just with some drag and drop we have to be able to implement some tasks so that was a very Introduction. 
and demo you uh, feel free to leave me a comment if you have any question and i'd be more than happy to answer those okay until next video have a good day